My name is Pastor John, and if you're watching this DVD, it means I'm really excited because you've just made a choice to follow Jesus Christ and turn your life over to Him. Now, this DVD series that you have started is a four-week series, and we call the series Merge because we want you to merge your life into God's plan, and God has a plan for your life. So I'm so glad that you've joined me. I'm so glad that you're here. Now listen, this four-week series is, is going to be, uh, we're going to celebrate this. This is going to be a great series uh, for you to go through. And when you finish all four weeks of this, then man, we're going to celebrate that. We're going to bring you up in front of everybody. We're just going to lavish our praises upon you. And we're just going to have a great time on, on, on a Wednesday night as you have followed through with this beginner's uh, discipleship curriculum that we call MERGE. Now, this first lesson that we want to talk to you about is about understanding what just happened. We want you to know what Jesus Christ just did in your heart and in your life, and we want you to really be able to understand that. So uh, the first uh, question we're going to ask is, what happened to me when I asked Jesus Christ into my heart? And as we go on, in your DVD case, you found a little insert. And there's an insert in there, and it's got blanks. And I want you to follow along with that insert. And I just want you to fill in the blanks as we go along and as I teach this to you. And we're only going to be about 15 minutes tops. And then you'll be done, and you'll bring that, and you'll take it back to Element, and you'll turn that in and get the second week, okay? So follow along in that, in that handout in your DVD case. So what happened when I asked Jesus into my heart? See, when you ask Christ to forgive you of your sins and take control of your life, He came and took up residence in your life. He transformed your spirit. And Scripture says that you are now alive in Christ Jesus. And for just a moment, I want you to think about your life like a computer hard drive. And for years, you've download, downloaded all kinds of sinful choices into your life in, in all areas. And I mean, your hard drive is, is completely full of worldly attitudes and motives and hurtful words that you might have spoken or were spoken to you by someone else that really left you broken. Not to mention just the plain old wrong choices like viewing pornography, yelling at your mom or dad, or lying, stealing, cheating, and the list goes on and on. But when you made the choice to invite God into your heart, it's like He wipes your past life, your hard drive. He wipes it clean. He begins to fill your life with His stuff, His stuff like love and kindness and righteousness. And all of a sudden, you want to make the right choices because you are falling in love with Jesus Christ and what He did for you. So much so uh, that, that uh, because you understand the price that was paid. You understand that Jesus Christ died on a cross for your sin and He paid the price and you're falling in love with Him. And man, you, you want to please God. And that's what this life is about. It's about loving Jesus Christ and following Him wholeheartedly. So a person who is saved as someone who just began a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. They made a commitment to do two things. Number one, turn from their old way of living. And number two, to live their new life the way that God has outlined for them to live in Scripture. Well, what do we need saved from? Well, salvation saves us when we accept Christ into our heart. It saves us from two penalties of sin. The first penalty is death. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. A sinful life is only going to bring you death and spiritual death. Penalty number two, uh, uh, salvation saves us from eternal separation from God. That's the second penalty. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 2 says, The problem is that your sins have separated you from God. Now, man, that's hard to, to describe, but your sin actually separates you from God. Like the relationship that God wants with you cannot happen if sin is blocking it. So we've got to get rid of the sin, and Jesus Christ can get rid of that sin and forgive that sin when we ask Him to. So when we get saved, we also receive something from the Lord. When we get saved, the first reward that we receive is that God gives us eternal and abundant life. John chapter 10, 10 says, For I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Reward number two. God gives us a purpose in life. Now, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Man, when you accept Jesus Christ into your life, 
He gives you a purpose. He rearranges your life. The things that were important to you before are not so important to you anymore. He kind of reprioritizes your life. He gives you new dreams. He gives you new passions. He immediately gives you some spiritual gifts. And now he's going to teach you and train you how to use those to bring honor and glory to him and how to advance the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Let's talk about understanding what sin is and where it came from. Here's the definition of sin. Any willful choice against the known will of God. Okay, that's the definition of sin. Basically, it's when you make a choice that you know God would not want you to make. Or a choice that goes directly against uh, God's word. Basically, it's knowing what's right and doing what's wrong anyway. That's sin. James chapter 4 verse 17 says, Anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. All right, so that's the definition of sin. Sin entered the world way back in the beginning when Adam and Eve sinned. Sin entered the world through Adam. And Romans chapter 5, verse 12 says, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, Adam, and death through sin, and in this way death came to all men because all men have sinned. You've sinned, I've sinned, everyone that is born in this world has sinned okay we have sin in our life and we need redemption we need forgiveness and that's what Jesus Christ has done for us Romans chapter 5 verse 19 says for just as uh, just as through the disobedience of the one man the many were made sinners so also through the obedience of the one man the many will be made righteous it's talking about the sin that entered through Adam but also righteousness that enters through Jesus Christ you see sin in your life will always take you further than you wanted to go and will always stay longer than you wanted it to stay and it will always cost you more than you wanted to pay. Sin is dangerous and sin destroys and you want to stay away from it. So why do we need to be saved from sin? Let's talk about that a little bit. Because when we sin, we are condemned. Romans chapter 5 verse 16 says, Judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation. Now, condemnation is the pronouncement of punishment imposed on a person who is found guilty of a crime. It's, it's basically their punishment. Like, I have a three-year-old little boy, and when, he, and when Hudson does something wrong, he gets put in time out. I mean, that's basically his punishment for doing something wrong. In the same way, you know, sin is way much more serious, but in the same way, you know, we have punishment because of our sin. That is what is due us. We are, due, we are condemned for punishment when we sin. But God can remove all of that through Jesus Christ. Now, so why do we need to be saved from sin? Second reason. Because when we sin, we are separated from God. When we sin, we're separated from God. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 2 says, the problem is that your sins have separated you from God. This is the other thing that's taking place. Sin in our life separates us. So we were created for relationship with God. You were created to, to commune, to, to communicate with God, to have communion or fellowship with God. That's why he created you. You are like his most precious, prized creation. And he desires to know you. He desires to, 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 to understand and for you to know him and understand him and, and to walk through this life with you. But when there's sin in our lives, it separates that and it doesn't allow that to take place. Third, uh, third reason why we need to be saved from sin. Because God has made consequences for our sin, and those consequences are death. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So, sin condemns us. Sin separates us from God. And there's consequences of that sin, and, and the consequences of that sin is death. Spiritual death. The great exchange. Let's talk about the great exchange. The only way us guilty sinners, you and me, could be made righteous is if an innocent person paid the penalty for your sins. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, God made him, talking about Jesus, who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. You see, on the cross, God condemned Jesus instead of us. Jesus took our condemnation. He took that punishment. He transferred the guilt of our sin 
to Jesus. Supernaturally, God transferred all that sin, all that darkness, all that, all that blackness and the sin and the filth. He transferred all of that from us onto Jesus' shoulders on the cross. Basically, Jesus took our place. G, uh, on the cross, Jesus was separated from God. Mark chapter 15, verse 33 to 34 says, At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is Aramaic, and it means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You see, Jesus was separated from God. He paid the full price for our sin. And then at that moment, Jesus experienced death. He died for you and for me. So the penalty was paid. All right. Uh, Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So here's the simple plan uh, for us. The simple plan is we are guilty. We are guilty of our sin. Our guilt earned us death. Christ died in our place. And when we admit that we are guilty and we ask Jesus Christ for forgiveness of sin, we trust that Christ uh, was punished in our place for us and he can make that transfer. And when we do that, we are declared as not guilty. We can become free to live faithfully for Jesus Christ. We can live in complete freedom. Sin will not control us anymore because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. And when that happens, and when you made that choice, you took on a new identity. Now this new identity is so great and it's so awesome. And I don't have time in this DVD series to really explain to you everything that happened. But there's a list on your hand, handout of all the things that happened to you when uh, you accepted Jesus Christ into your heart. So when someone gets saved, the Bible says that they are now a new person with a new identity. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, When someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person inside. He is not the same anymore. A new life has begun. Now begin to look at that list. Check out all the things the Bible says about you. You know, the, the paraphrased list shows you who you really are in Jesus Christ and what happened at your spiritual birth, which was that moment that you gave your heart to the Lord. Now, I'm just going to read a couple of these, but these are just so awesome. And I'd love for you in your quiet times and your devotional times when you just spend time alone with God in your room or wherever you are, man, begin to go through these. Just solidify these, these definitions of, of your change, definitions of who you are, your identity. Solidify those in your heart. And it's going to take you a long way in your relationship and knowing truly who God is and learning about each other in this relationship. So here's just a couple. I'm the salt of the earth. I'm the light of the world. I'm a child of God. I'm a part of the true vine and Christ's life flows through me. I'm Christ's friend. I'm chosen by Christ to bear fruit. Uh, uh, I am Christ's personal witness sent out to tell everybody about him. I am a slave of righteousness. I'm a slave of God making me holy and giving me eternal life. I'm a child of God and I can call him my father. You see, there are so many different things that happens to your identity, to who you are when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And I really want you to know those things. The list goes on. So these traits that we're talking about are not true of you because of anything you have done. They are true because of what Jesus Christ has done for you. You can make these traits more meaningful and productive in your life by simply choosing to believe what God has said about you. And God's word is true and is faithful. And we're going to learn more about God's word this next week and the next session of your DVD driven curriculum in this merge curriculum. So be sure to uh, take this DVD cassette, this, this DVD back to the information center and uh, uh, return it and they will give you a brand new one. And I will see you next time you put the next uh, lesson in. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming. We're excited about your life with Jesus Christ. We're excited about what God is going to do in you and through you.